Welcome everybody to The Good and the Bad, a show where I take you through one of the games that we watched over the weekend and I tell you what they did well and uh, what they didn't. This past weekend we saw Orlando Pirates take on Disciples FC in the first preliminary round of the CAF Champions League. These are qualifiers for the group stages and Orlando Pirates has made it through. They're going to be facing Ijuaneng Galaxy in the second round but let's focus on their 4-0 win versus Disciples. Let's start with the bad. Number five. Oh, traffic. Do you know how many people I spoke to while I was live and in the group that said, guys, we just can't get to the stadium. I've been sitting in traffic for hours trying to get there. And it, this is not the first time we've seen this happen. The last home game at Orlando Stadium, uh, I think a week or two ago, we saw the same thing or we heard the same thing. We saw it during the NetBank Cup final with Mamadi Sundowns, where people were stuck up to three hours in traffic pre and post the game trying to watch some football. I think just from a fan standpoint, wanting to watch games at the stadium, it really does play badly and maybe discourage a lot of people if you know that you're going to face so many difficulties to actually get to the stadium. That's the one view. That's, that's the fan outside view. I'm more interested in what it does to the psyche of the team that's playing. So Orlando Pirates knows that Escotini, Orlando Stadium, is one of the most raucous, craziest stadiums we have in South Africa. One of the best atmospheres to play in, especially for that team. There's something, Mancorni choose, that the fans give to the Orlando Pirates team that allows them to go forward and, and at times demolish teams. But how much can you get from that if your fans can only access the stadium or can finally get into the stadium only uh, uh, at half time when the second half, start, second half starts. How, how can you draw from them if most of them are not there for a lot of the game and it turns out some of that issue is just because of traffic. There are going to be games this season where Orlando Pirates is going to be playing and they're going to need their fans to be there and, 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 and to be pushing them on. Right. Imagine if it's the first half, the stadium is, is let's say, uh, half full. You know, you can, the, the noise is not quite there. The, the atmosphere is not quite there. Pirates goes 2-0 down. Can you count on a second half performance versus maybe a team that defends very well? Can you count on them to be able to win that second half when the fans finally trickle in? And maybe this is a sign to fans that we can't, man try arrive at, at Orlando Stadium at Cora 2, the time. Try to arrive at the stadium, you know, for my 20 minutes before, 30 minutes before. Maybe we should be arriving an hour before. You know, when you watch those games that are from the rest of Africa and you see Bobo, Al Ali, and you see Bo We Dead and the type of fear, man, the, the type of fear, the type of control they have pre the game. Maybe that's what we need from Pirates. I saw you guys have adopted a, a smoke, King smoke bombs and all of those type of things. I think earlier arrival would be great and maybe it also lessens this traffic situation. Number four. For all of the attacking flair that Pirates has, for all of the fear that Pirates strikes in attack, their defense seems to be an issue. Their defense uh, uh, seems at times to be overrun and overwhelmed. This Disciples team at times during that game, especially late, was able to put a lot of pressure on that Pirates defense. And I think one of the problems with the Pirates when you look at it, especially when they're defending, is that they defend in the two, and then you have Munyani on the one side and Hoto on the other side, and they're gone. Whether it's Libitsu and Shandu, you know, whether whoever they put there, they're gone. And they leave that defense with a two. Now, Nda is not the fastest player in the world and usually whoever he's paired with is also not that quick. I, I believe it was Sessane this time around, right? So they need to figure out how to better protect that defense. Whether it means that you have a right back that stays while your left back pushes forward so you can be in a three or getting an enforcer in the midfield who can be the shield for that uh, defense. We saw last year in the game that they lost versus Stellenbosch, I believe it was the first season of the first game of the season, where the defense uh, got shown out by Reyners and Van Veik, if I'm not mistaken. They came out in a quick transition and caught that defense off and were able to score. So there is a weakness within the defense that I think Old Jose has to address because there's going to be games where you're not going to be playing at Disciples from Madagascar. You know, if you make it in Champions League, you're going to be playing versus an Al-Akhli. 
You're going to be playing versus a Wheat Dad. You're going to be playing versus a TP Mazembe. Teams that are going to punish you. Uh, Esperance. Teams that will take those two, three, four chances where they catch you on break, which is mostly the African game, and take advantage of that leaky defense. So that is something that Jose really does have to fix. Sorry to interrupt this video, but I need a little bit of your help. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can probably see my subscribe account. And if you can, I'd be very grateful if you would subscribe. That is actually the best way to support this channel because the bigger that number is, the better it looks to potential guests and other brands and companies that I will approach for sponsorship. It may seem like a very small thing to ask for, but it actually helps with all of this. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the video. Number three. You know, in my head, I always imagine that if I was a football player who was playing in a country where nobody thought you'd make it, so let's say a South African playing in the English Premiership, you'd give your all because you understand the moment that you are in. Disciples had a very favorable situation. You are nil-nil in your first leg versus Orlando Pirates, the mighty Baganias. You're going into the second leg, you go through the first half, and it's not looking bad. But what I expected from Disciples coming into this game was a hungry team. I wanted to see a team that was going to go, you know what guys, we have 90 minutes, let's give it our all. Let's play with everything we have because we might not get this opportunity again. I was expecting a Disciples team that was going to play out of their skins, past their ratings, past their expectations, because they've got nothing to lose. And while we did get a glimpse of it uh, uh, later on in the game, for the, for the most part, their players seemed a little bit scared. Their number 10, uh, he was wearing number 4, their number 10 player was afraid to put in that final pass. You know, they, they, they tried to uh, bore Pirates to death. And I think uh, uh, these prelim rounds are so good, you know, for these teams and it, it creates a really big opportunity. But you have to take it. And I feel as though Disciples didn't take any of the advantage they were handed, whether it be the fact that Pirates didn't know about you guys going into the game, whether it be the fact that Pirates is going to go play on AstroTurf, something that they don't normally do and it's messing with how they play, whether it's to do with you're watching man, they're not playing a classic Pirates game just yet, right? You come to Orlando Stadium, you, you're still nil-nil, you can be in the driver's seat. There were so many advantages afforded to that team that they just didn't take. And I think I was a little bit disappointed by that. Number two. One of the things that I was highlighting last season when we were watching Orlando Pirates, and we spoke about this at length, is Orlando Pirates' build-up. Now, for me, there's two separate Orlando Pirates teams. There's a team that has Undondo in the middle, who comes back, and Chayine can play him the ball, and he's the one that then plays it to Botito, and they attack very centrally. They come up, up the middle of the pitch, and they play, man. Then there's the other Pirates, and that Pirates is when Unda comes into play. And when Da comes into play, he's so comfortable on the ball, right? He's so comfortable on the ball that they give him the ball and he becomes the primary playmaker. He's the guy that decides where an Orlando Pirates attack is going to go. And I don't want to fault in Da for this because he gets the ball and usually he tries to play it wide. He plays long wide balls uh, to the wing. So either to Mfukeng's side or either to uh, Saleng's side. But it's long balls that essentially become 50-50s. So it's Fukeng versus the defender or Saleng versus the defender with an aerial ball. Eight times out of ten, that ball is going to be won by the defender. Now... The reason why I say I don't want to fault Unda too much for this is because one of the problems with the Pirates midfield is that the two guys that you put there, Talentembata and Udamini, don't want to collect the ball. They don't want to come back. So when Dondo would be the guy who runs back to get the ball, Pirates doesn't have a link person in the middle. So, Lamini is more of an attacker. He wants to join the attack more on the right-hand side. Utito obviously is the number 10. He wants to influence the game when they get into that final third. You have Umbata, who's sort of playing in the middle. But many times during the game, you'll find Pirates waiting. Dao will have the ball, and they'll just wait. And then Dao will have to make the executive decision to play the ball, play the ball long. So, um, Pirates needs to 
fix that. They need to find a happy medium between having Da be your primary playmaker and forcing him to play long and having maybe your defense when Da's not there, uh, Sbisi Toki or Sesano, whoever else, uh, playing there and you don't trust them with the ball. So you play through to the midfield. They need to figure out how to merge those two in order to make sure that Abu Tito don't go missing. One of the issues is that when you play those long balls, you're bypassing Abotito, you're bypassing Abombat, you're bypassing the influential players, right? And you're forcing the other players of influence to be in places where they're uncomfortable. So Pirates and, and Coach Jose have to figure out how to make that work. Number one. But the biggest thing that I think that Orlando Pirates needs to fix, especially this team, is that they tend to play towards their opponent's level. So if they're playing Mamadi Sundowns, they play with a high tempo, they're committed, they hit the ball. I saw, I saw a, a, a clip of him in the changing room telling them that, guys, we need to die. Get out there and die, right? And play to that level. So when they play Mamadi Sundowns, when they play Kaiser Chiefs, when they're playing in the cup game, they, you see the most incredible Orlando Pirates. But when they're playing lesser opposition, or they're playing in a situation that is not as big. You know, second preliminary round of the CAF Champions League. Everybody expects you to get through. When they're playing on a random Tuesday and it's Cape Town Spurs, the team that's at the bottom of the log, where you're supposed to be beating the brakes off of that team, they can't get up for it. They can't will themselves to want to take those games seriously. And next season is going to be interesting because... One, a lot of the games they're going to play, should they make it through this preliminary round and go into the Champions League, is going to be important games. Back to back to back to back of important games. Six group stage games. If you make it into the knockouts, you've got those type of games. You still have to contend with your cup games. You still have to contend with the league. You still have to wake up and play for those games. And secondly, on the league point, you have to be consistent for 30 games. You have to. Play that Wednesday game versus Richards Bay and demolish them. Same as you have to play versus Sundowns and demolish them. You have to be able to keep that up for the entire season. And the first team for Pirates doesn't seem to be able to conjure those feelings up when there's no stakes. You know, I think, even in the game that we saw versus Disciples, the only reason why we see Pirates maybe switch it up a notch is because... The nil-nil in the first leg and uh, parts of that first half that was a little bit slow, right? Develop the pressure. So what happens when that pressure is not there? Can you go out and, and win those games? That is a big thing that Pirates has to look at. And, and you have to look at the players as well. You have to look at the first team and say, okay, Tito, it's quiet. It's not going well. It's a defensive team. It's a low block. Can you will us forward? Okay, really, you know, uh, um, this guy has had you for the whole game. How do you maneuver so that you can free yourself up and be as influential as you normally are? Okay, how do we raise the bar of this Pirates team? And a fear that I have for Pirates is that bench. That there's some players there, I mentioned in Donjo and how important Donjo was to Pirates at some point last season. But then when he comes on, man... He, he doesn't have the thing. He doesn't move like he wants to win this game. He doesn't move like he's present. He doesn't move like, you know, uh, this is important to him. And, and, and that's going to be very important going into this season. Those players too. So that's something that Paris has to fix. But it wasn't all bad. Let's get into the good. Number five. Once Orlando Stadium is full, that is the best vibe the, the most intimidating, the most recharging to their own team environment ever. What I'm enjoying from uh, the past few weeks is the type of attendance that we're seeing in Pirates, is the type of attendance that we saw even with Mamelu Sundowns to a degree, the type of attendance that we are starting to see in other games. I don't think there's been CAF Champions League games that have been that packed especially in preliminary for us. We know Mamadi Sundowns and sometimes how they struggle to get fans in, even for the Champions League. So it's so wonderful to see stadiums full again, to see the videos trending on, on social media after games of all of the fans singing together and dancing together and the drums and all of that stuff. It's so incredible. I think the only thing that we need to add, like I said, is fans arriving early so that they can create those atmospheres from jump. But anyway, uh, I think... 
what a wonderful, wonderful thing to see a full stadium. You know, we saw it with Chiefs in the Toyota Cup. We saw it with Bafana Bafana. We've seen it in uh, Nedbank Cup final. We've seen it with Mamreji Sundowns. We're now seeing it with Pirates. And Pirates seems to be the most uh, consistent one in that regard. I think that will do wonders for South African football. And it will maybe cause other people to want to go create similar atmospheres all across the country um, when league games are on. You know, I think the excitement in South African football is coming back. And I, for one, am really excited. Really, really, really excited to see how it pans out this year. Number four. Okay, so I spoke about Pirates' build-up issues. But what was incredible was when Miguel Tim walked onto the pitch, that changed. Miguel Tim, when he came onto the pitch, raised his hand and said, No, guys, let me come back. Let me come back, I'll get the ball and we'll play it. There was a point on the right hand side of Pirates' defense where Tim came back, they played a 1 2 1 2 1 2, freed up the central players. I believe it was Tito. And you started to see Abu Tito come alive. You started to see Abu Rile come alive. You know, it's no longer that long, big ball. Now there's somebody who's taking that initiative to say, fine, you know, Nda, I'm going to support you. And he was playing so well, not just as somebody who links the play from the back. He also did very well in sort of becoming a box-to-box. -box. He was part of the defense and then was part of the attack a couple of times. And I think Tim is going to be maybe a key part of this team. If Abombata don't learn those skills, I think Tim and possibly Makawula to a degree, but more to Tim, the leadership that he has, that he shows, uh, uh, the availability, the openness to receive the, and pull people out of positions in order to play that quick ball that Pirates really does love playing. Tim is going to be very important to this team and I think he played really well in this game. Number three. Okay, I know that I said they were scared. I know that uh, um, I said that they came to... Uh, not to defend. I know that I spoke about they needed to come out and uh, uh, play for the occasion, realize what the occasion is and rise to it. Disciples FC towards the end, let's say the last 15 to 20 minutes, actually played some great football. They actually pinned Pirates back. They got forward. They were combining well and lacked maybe just the final ball. The final ball had been something that they weren't able to do for the whole game. Uh, their number 10s, I believe he was wearing number 4, but the player was playing number 10, often got the ball in a place where players were making runs in front of him and wouldn't play that final pass. But as they got more into the game, and I don't know if it became a situation where they just gave in and said, you know, we've got nothing to lose, let's see how far we can push this game. They actually came out and, and, and gave us a little bit of something. So I think should they make it into the preliminaries again uh, next year, they might, be, uh, they might learn from these type of situations that one, don't be scared. Two, play the final ball. Three, if you don't take your chances, if you don't create chances, if you're playing against a better team, the quality will win out and it will win out big. Number two. I don't know. I, I don't know. If there is a player in South African football who is more valuable to their team than Utito uh, Maswangani is to a pirate. And I don't mean it in the sense of stats and, 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 and the play and all of that stuff. I mean it in he controls the feelings, the emotions of a pirate. And he's got an incredible knack of making sure when to do it. Once Amaya here and people start waking up. One through ball here and then we've got a goal when it's getting tense, when it's quiet, when it's boring, when we're under pressure. He, he scored a goal in that game versus Disciples that is incredible. So again, I think Utito has to be the most important player to a team as a whole and I mean fans I mean players I mean coaches I mean just the emotions around the team and it makes sense why he got to don that number 10 jersey if there's one team I've often said between Chiefs and Pirates those are fan-led teams those are people that have to worry more about how fans are reacting to things than any other teams in the league and when you can get the fans in line, when an ambulance has to be some say figil, and you watch the fans light up, man, and you watch Orlando get crazy, and you watch, man, he, he holds it in his hands so well. And I think um, this is going to be a massive season for him. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to a lot from him. At jersey number 10 is an important number to South African football, but especially to Pirates. And uh, I know we've only seen maybe a season of him uh, uh, having that, but you could already tell in the way they speak about him, in the way that they are happy when he does things, in the way that he turns things around for Pirates, that he's going to be super important. So, Tito, what a player. Number one. The most important thing for South African football is for us to have our two biggest, best teams in the CAF Champions League. For a very long time, we've watched the North. The North has told us what African football is. They've dictated to us and like what African football is. And they've been successful. Bo Al Ali winning it over and over again. Then Abo Zamalek winning. Then Abo Abo uh, Esperanz winning. All of those teams that have dictated what African football is. It was very, it's very important for us to get another team in there. And I was a little bit heartbroken, even though I'm not a Pirates fan. I was, I was a little bit heartbroken that Pirates got knocked out last year uh, uh, by Ijoane. And the reason why I was heartbroken is that Pirates is a team, if you're a fan of football, that needs to take the next step. Yeah, um, nah, look, we know MTN, now net bank, back to back. It's nice to do that. But there's a couple of spaces where we need Pirates to move forward. One of those spaces is in the league. 23 points behind Momoluji Sundowns. You need to close that gap and prove that you're not second because of your lack of consistency, but you're second because you're a really good team. But more importantly, on the African continent, those two teams have the only stars we have in South Africa. It's been a shame to watch Pirates not being able to take the next step from that CAF Confed final that they played a few years ago versus, I think it was Ares Bekein, from uh, 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 being second uh, uh, a few times. We need the Pirates to take that second step for South African football as a whole because it's good for us. It's good for the players to go out. We, we often complain about Ibafana Bafana, for example, going out and playing international games, going out and playing in Africa, and maybe the players not being ready enough, not being green enough. We, we talk about a Tito who holds everything in his hands, like I said, uh, uh, here locally. But now I would love to see Tito go out and have to play versus Abu Al Ali and have to play versus Abu Esperance, uh, Abu Seeking, Siar Beluiz Dad, have to play versus Abu Witted and get Get that into his repertoire as well, understanding the African game. Then maybe those things can, can reverberate back to Bafana Bafana and we can see a lot better. Abom Fugeng, man, being asked to come out and play versus foreign opposition, you know, to grow what they're bringing to the table. This is what I think is the most important thing that Paris needs to get in there so that we can have more teams with African experience at the highest level. And uh, I know I'm speaking a little bit early uh, in that this is only the second preliminary round. They're going into the final one now versus joining again. Um, but it's something we need to keep in mind. And to watch teams progress past these things, whether it be Stellenbosch in the Confed, uh, whether it be Skukune making it in, Supersport usually plays these games, whether it's um, Pirates, whether it's Sundowns, we have to support them. And make sure that, you know, these are the teams that are flying the flag of South Africa very high. Let's, let's support them in these things that they're doing. That has been the good and the bad. I'll catch you guys after the next one. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment, to share. And also watch the other videos on the channel. There's some really, really, really cool uh, content pieces that I have here. And I'm also an award-nominated creator now. So uh, you know it's really good.